All right, this is Buck recording live. Um, so there's no editing here. I just wanted to go through a few easy steps on how to make a podcast look and sound pretty darn good. If I know a lot of people are probably going to switch to online platforms. I personally, right now, I'm using Zoom. Zoom is a great product. Zoom.us or well, I could you could look up Zoom for web conferencing. It'll pop up, and uh, it's a really good program to use. I uh, want to show you the microphones I'm using. I uh, Let me turn off this fake background for a second. Okay, so I'm going to here. I'm going to choose virtual background. And I reset to none. So actually there's stuff happening behind me. I'll do the share screen option here. So I go down here. Let's see how this works. To this little arrow down here. I click it. A window pops up and it says choose virtual background it's best to be really close to the mic i find because it does it, it compresses the sound and the visuals anyway that's the window that pops up and i could go down to here and select this picture and that becomes my virtual background as you can see let's close it or i can go back again choose a virtual background uh, import a picture by clicking this little icon right here add image my pictures pop up and I can choose any image I want so I'll just click on this one automatically changes it's it's pretty user-friendly zoom um, recommends that you have a plain background but I don't need a plain background obviously it still worked it worked pretty good I mean it doesn't have to be perfect here I just want people to be able to uh, see and hear me okay for lighting I actually have this LED work light I bought from Canadian tire and I simply just put a piece of paper towel in front of it to diffuse it. Otherwise it's pretty harsh lighting. So I'll do this. This is without the paper towel, pretty harsh lighting. And this is with the paper towel. It softens it up so that you don't burn your eyes out when you're doing like a podcast or something. Okay, so how about for excellent sound quality? Well, I personally, any mic will work for this. I'm using a Behringer and I'm, I'm using a shotgun microphone. So it's a long shotgun microphone I bought back in the 90s. I don't need the foam pop filter on unless I'm talking really close because it stops the pops, right? So I want to be able to avoid the pops. There's other ways to do this. So I'll cover more microphones, but right now I'm using this shotgun microphone. I split the signal left and right because if I record this in stereo, I have the option of turning one channel down a bit one channel off, right? So I can actually have a, a main channel and a backup channel. Right now I'm just turning them both up to the same level because they seem to be getting really good levels. So you don't need the splitter, that's just an option, but you do need an XLR cable, a three pin XLR cable. And, um, and then just going into one of the channels here and it will work. If you're getting left only or right only, you might have to split, but I don't think that's the case with Zoom. I think it's summing it all to mono. Um, this little box has a couple of options on front. So right now I am using a line in and not instrument in. Just find the best setting that works for you. On the back, it's got phantom power. So you can select phantom power for a condenser mic because the shotgun microphone is a condenser microphone. And then turn the levels up until you can hear them. You got the headphone output jack, so you can hear what's going on. And with the Zoom software, which is great, um, you simply just select the microphone. If you plug the USB in, uh, probably especially before you start the, the program, it'll give you all the options of what, what microphones to use, what speakers to use, et cetera. So you can just work with those settings and test those settings yourself. So uh, I find the best sound I get is with a shotgun microphone. The reason I'm using a shotgun, or sometimes I actually use a mini shotgun, a camera shotgun, which goes directly into the computer. So you don't need the interface necessarily unless you want better sound quality. That Behringer interface, I'm not sure what model it is. It's the U-Foria UMC202HD. And I've had it for a few months now, did lots of tests on it. I did a video on it, it sounds great. And it was about $103 on Amazon or something. So not that expensive to get started doing high quality stuff. Um, otherwise I have, oh, there's my phone. I forgot to mute it. Sorry. Otherwise I have the mini shotgun microphone, which I could put right in front of me. It'll sound pretty good. Not as good as the shotgun microphone here, but watch what happens when I take the shotgun microphone and I choose the virtual background, which I'm going to go back. I've got all these things. I can choose it. 
Golden Gate Bridge if I want, which looks pretty good. Or you can choose a video, but I chose my studio. So I'm choosing my studio. Now, guess what? The mic disappears. So you don't see the mic and it still sounds pretty good. And you don't have to show what's going on in the background. Like if you're your dog or your child is doing something in the background. If they're making noise, it'll be picked up less by the shotgun microphones and more by any other microphones. I'm in my kitchen right now. It's um, um, not acoustically perfect, but with a shotgun microphone, it drastically reduce any reflections. Um, in my studio, if I do this in my, my studio back here, you can see my speakers and stuff, which I turn off during any recording, of course. I do put absorbers on the side walls to minimize reflections in that small cubicle space of my studio. It's my, uh, the, the upstairs den studio slash thing. Anyway, so that covers the uh, interface, the shotgun microphone. I'm just using these headphones, which are... Um, Audio Technica professional headphones, but any any headphones will do. But I'm like a serious audio visual guy, so I I, I need to have really really good headphones. But um, but there are other options. You can actually use your you can use this. All you have to do is ooh, let me turn off the virtual background again, so you can actually see what's going on because it, it does weird things as you move around. So I'm going to switch it to none. I'm back here. So, oh, see my dog's barking. You can probably hear a little bit of that. Shh. I'm doing a podcast or an online video. Okay, so you can use your standard headphones with the microphone. When you plug this in to the to your computer, it's going to give you the option of uh, headphones or headphones with microphone. Well, this is a, if you look closely, that's a T-R-R-S, tip, ring, ring, sleeve, which means stereo plus a microphone plus ground so whatever order it is it doesn't matter just plug it into the headphone jack of a modern computer if you're using a really old computer you might have to do some troubleshooting um so that's that so i covered everything interface but you don't need the interface i just choose the interface because uh, not for every video i do just for for this uh simulated podcast i'm doing um and i'm going to go back to my virtual background so all i did for the virtual background just to let you know is uh, if i don't see a picture i like that's supplied i'll just go add image or add video it's pretty easy and i can choose the other studio picture choose that and there's my other studio picture with better lighting and the uh acoustic panels on the side when i do podcasts picture of my mom in the background and uh old friend and Sparky the robot over here and all the, uh, the stuff I've earned over the years, of course, speeches. And that's not really an award. It's just a 10 year dedication plaque for teaching professionally, which I totally appreciate. And um, my cameras and stuff up there. And I got my other zoom R24 up there, but basically um, it's that simple to choose a fake background and you don't need a solid color. Now it's not going to be perfect around the edges you can see, but at least it makes the microphone disappear. So it sounds good without having that big microphone in the face in the picture, right? I can share any desktop I want. So if I go share screen, I could choose to share anything I want, including I'm going to share some Vegas video, which I'm going to do in the coming weeks. It's a great time for this to show people how to edit using Vegas. And I could, you know, it's, it's a really, really good platform. I really encourage people to try out Zoom. It's pretty awesome. I'm not a salesperson for Zoom, by the way. I'm just pretty amazed at how it works. I'm going to go back into my, oh, I can move this around, it appears. I'm going to go back into Zoom, make the picture bigger. Where's that? There it is. Zoom, meeting controls. Oh yeah, I sorry, sorry about that. I got to stop share. Okay, that's what you got to do. Stop sharing. There's a few things. If I want to share the screen, I have a bottom down here which says share computer sound, so I can share the computer sound and then I can play videos on YouTube and stuff like that. So let's go to. Um, I'm gonna share this for now. Go over it here. Wow, lots of news on that. Okay, just get, we just don't have enough news, I guess, on that. Oh, when I did share, so I got to go back and. Share and remember to put share computer audio sound every time. But uh, anyway, so that's basically the highlights here. Don't forget the lighting, good audio, the best microphone you can have. Like I say, these little microphones here actually work. Um, but you know, they're not as good as like a, a professional quality microphone, but you don't have to spend 500. I spent this microphone costs 500 bucks, but you don't have to spend that. 
you could easily spend a hundred dollars or less to get a really decent microphone, right? Um, even this this little one I showed you here, the Sony Mini Shotgun microphone, uh, that is that is like fifteen years old or something like that, and it still sounds really good. And I've done a lot of actually professional sounding interviews with it, so you don't need the five hundred dollar microphone. I just have it, and then I use use any microphone that you have. XLR is the best. You can use it a uh, dynamic as well. Let me show you this one here. It's a just a standard dynamic microphone. I wouldn't say standard. It's actually probably better than some. It's a TC Helicon microphone, but it doesn't require phantom power. It doesn't matter if you have the Behringer interface. You just turn on phantom power and you can use it. Anyways, I hope this helps. Um, I know a lot more people want to go online and maybe explore the online world because what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? So I've been housebound for, you know, seems like many days. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Barely go out except to walk the dog and get some fresh air. I don't even go to the store. We're ordering online. Good luck to you all. Um, take care out there and thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, um, let's, you know, share, click, like, and subscribe to each other's videos because YouTube and Google are still running and um, they're still, up. if they're generating ads, then there's revenue there until they stop generating ads. But uh, for me, it's, it's also about education and stuff like that because I've always done this anyways and I never made any money before on YouTube. I just kept doing it regardless, right? And then when, you know, they throw a little money in my account here and there, it's like not enough to live off of, obviously, but it's, it's like, oh, thank you very much. Okay, so I get rewarded for my efforts and so can you, you know, if you want to explore that, um, then you just follow the Google rules and stuff like that, as long as they're still advertising, but they seem to be going pretty good. I mean, Netflix is still on. TV stations are still on, so we haven't lost the power yet. Anyways, good luck to you all, and uh, cheers for now.